John Deary. So we're going for a drive. Twenty-three Maserati MC20 with launch control. Oh, oh that boost hits hard. <laughs> horsepower and torque. 621 horsepower, 538 pound-feet of torque from a three-liter twin-turbo V6. Give, give me a little. Manual. <laughs> okay, so many things going on. Number one, the way that this pops off those shifts is so quick. It's an eight-speed dual clutch. I believe it's the one that's shared with the Corvette. But my God, this shifts so quickly, and I think they're tricking our brains, Yuri. Because when the shifts happen, I feel like they happen halfway through the shift. Yeah, because that is the first Maserati with a dual clutch, and the click happens way before you pull it all the way to the steering wheel. But first, okay, yo, what is this? Maserati's first supercar of our generation. Supercar checklist? Is it loud? Is it fast? Not the loudest, but yes, it is fast. But these turbo blow-off valve sounds behind me, like, I'm very okay with that. The sounds are good, considering it is not a V8. Yes. And it's not hybrid at all. No, it's not. And do we have a lot of carbon fiber? Heck yes, we do, everywhere. The whole car is carbon fiber. The chassis is carbon fiber. It is everywhere. Do the doors go up? Heck yes, they do. We got butterfly doors. Do you look cool getting in and out? Yes, you do with their butterfly doors. Look at this thing. <laughs> and the seats are surprisingly comfortable, so it's not like jumping into a Porsche sport bucket, carbon that, bucket. That's right. Does it get a lot of attention? Uh, yeah, we had a guy like, whoa, when he saw us driving by. Yes. Does it fit a box? Maybe. <laughs> we don't do the boxes there, it's hard to tell, but there is a bunch of usable room in the back. Yes, yeah, so that definitely takes away from this car. Are there cup holders? There is one. One cup holder, and it's actually pretty functional, so yeah. that's a supercar fail. And then the last test that I can remember. The visor. Visor test. Three, two, one. It is Full bolted fail. in there. Supercar pass. Supercar pass. pass. This so, yeah. is 100% a supercar. Yo, good job, Maserati. This is pretty sick. Okay, so this engine, it pulls so hard. There's basically no lag, and it just wants to keep pulling. I, I love this V6 turbo. Okay, and it is rear-wheel drive only. That's right. No all-wheel drive available. But back to what the MC20 is, literally. It means Maserati Corsa 2020 because 2020 was the year that this was revealed for the first time. Okay, and then looking at the inside here, the tech, the steering wheel, a bunch of other little things, and comparing it to the current Grecale and Gran Turismo that we recently drove from Maserati of London. So go to Maserati of London if you'd like to buy an MC20, maybe even this MC20. Yeah, I'd recommend you buy this one because the spec is gorgeous. This has a lot of older Alpha in here which makes sense for it being from 2020, but am I mad about it? No, probably not. No. Because you love alphas. Like you can tell by little things like the steering wheel buttons, some of the ways that you interact with the car, but some of the things are also future Maserati, like the infotainment. Yeah, I feel like it's just the infotainment is current Maserati. And, and a lot, this gauge else. cluster kind of looks a little bit older. Looks like alpha, the, that's yes, alpha style. Exactly. And then the motor is new Maserati because it's the uh, Neptuno. Neptuno. Is there a P in there? No. It'd be a lot cooler if there was. That's very not Italian of you. Yeah, but Trident, Neptune. Nettuno. It's shared with the Gran Turismo and the detuned version in the Gricale Trofeo. Yes. But, but this feels completely different. Yeah, this gets the most power and like, holy crap, this, there's like no lag. Like even if I'm in the wrong gear, it just picks up right away. Yeah, it's nice. You know, that's the nice thing about boosted six cylinders <laughs> instead of like just naturally aspirated V8 or a hybrid system. And then back to the steering wheel, we got the start stop on it. And my favorite is we have a launch button on the steering wheel. I love launch control and we have it on the steering wheel. And they purposely made the steering wheel a little bit thick. I do notice that it is actually quite nice. It's not too thick. It's like kind of in between Porsche and like Mercedes and stuff like that. Like it's, it's nice. I do like the feel of the dual clutch in this compared to a ZF. Like I like ZFs. I like grr, grr but just for driving, this feels fantastic. I love that they're column mounted. Yeah, and it does feel like it shifts faster than the C8 Corvette, like that, that is unreal. 
Like yeah. you, you literally, it's Dude, one that, of those that, cars that you breathe on and it shifts. It does that. I'm pretty sure that's the fourth time already that you've been. Yeah, because that's my favorite thing to do with this <laughs> car. And I've been driving this in Corsa, which is uh, forced traction off. There are modes below this, but I don't dare enter them. I'm going to let you enter those whenever you want to. But this gives me the stiffest suspension mode and automatically turns off my traction. And then you can also swipe on this little uh, gear selector to then change your traction mode to make it a little bit softer. But if you wanted it extra soft, you got to go below that into sport. Yuri, should we do yeah, it? Yeah, let's do it for let's do it for the soft. This, this is the dream come true. All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, we could fit though. And zero to sixty with launch control is under three seconds, which is pretty damn fast. And this thing weighs, uh, I think, around thirty three hundred pounds ish, which I think is very similar to that Ferrari two nine six that we drove, which this kind of competes with, but this is down on power because it's not hybrid. And I love that it's not a hybrid, actually. Yeah, it's just like an overall very good mix. Yes. Like, nothing is weird. And there's a lot of ways cars can get... Well, there's one uh, thing that's kind of weird. The brake pedal right now. But, so, but not in a bad way. The, you require a lot of pressure, but not a lot of travel, which makes it different than every other car we've driven. Like the amount of control you can get with pressure, like it's so perfect. Like if you're on track, yes. you could dial in the exact amount of like everything with your foot. It is the, the kind of pressure that I wish I could have on sim racing. You know when you're sim racing, yes. you hit the brakes, you're like, I just flew by that. I, I had no idea what the feel is. This is the most amount of feel. You can tell that they did this on purpose. This was not like, oh no, we didn't add enough brake booster. Like this is what you want on the racetrack. It is a little bit weird to get used to on the road from driving regular cars, but you can totally get used to it. You just have to expect to give it a little bit more pressure in the first bit of travel. It's just, it's great. Yes. Okay, let's get you in here, Yuri. One more rip, though. <laughs> so quick. I don't even think you got the red line. It's so scary. I, I got close. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try launch in sport mode. Only ah, in Corsa. Corsa. <laughs> I guess we got to try it in Corsa. Traction fully off. Send it. <laughs> That's such a hard shift. It's a little weak off the initial launch, though. Because it's rear-wheel it, drive. I know. Yeah. I still don't know if I hit red line because I was trying to shift, and I, I, I didn't see any red flashing, but I saw yellow go pretty far. Yeah, it goes pretty far along the top. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And then if I go to sport, I actually have a probably better-looking gauge buster. Yeah, circle tack. <laughs> And yeah, this shifts. Wait, that was red line. Yeah. Yeah, that brake pedal. It is very like racetrack. And then the coolest part of being a passenger is this floorboard where I feel like I just put full pressure on a racetrack. And yeah. Like, oh, okay, cool. And if you wanted to cover that lovely floorboard with a set of Tuxmat, go to tuxmat.com slash the straight pipes to see what they have for your Maserati because they currently have tux mats for the Gracale. Yeah, they probably don't make one for this. No, but it'd be nice. Uh, other stuff on the inside, yeah, the gauge cluster customization is cool. When you're in Corsa, you can set up a lap timer by clicking the menu button, but I feel like if you have this, you probably have like a full camera system that you hook up so you could actually get sick lap times. The dial to change the modes is pretty cool. It looks like a watch, you said? Apparently, Maserati, because there is no analog clock in here, they designed this to look like a luxury timepiece, which it kind of does and uh, you can go through that. And then there's a swipe option to get to softer suspension, but only one softer than the one you're in, which is cool. That's right. And then yeah, I think your valves don't fully open unless you're in Corsa right off the start, right? Yeah, so GT and wet mode, your valves are open above 5,000. Uh, sport, they're open above 3,000 or 3,500. And then Corsa, they're always open. Yeah, let me go to GT, auto, floor it. That's still so Very cool. smooth, predictable, but there's not a lot of gear changes there. It's like one gear will just pull you through pretty fast. That's nice. So we didn't really go on about the looks yet. No, this is gorgeous. I'd like to talk about it a little bit. There is a spider version as well, but this is not that. The Cielo. I think the looks are great. Yeah. It looks really cool. It looks a lot like that one from like 15 years ago or whatever. I don't know what it's called. MC12? Yeah, something like that. Was that from 2012? I don't know. No, I, I, I don't remember. <laughs> Anyways, this looks cool. I think I prefer it in white or yellow, but this blue is very nice. Ah, this blue is gorgeous. There's so much flake in it. This thing attracts so much attention. I love it. Okay, uh, we got a frunk. What's up in the frunk? There's a small storage compartment there. Okay, and then how about headlights? 
Headlights are the corporate design, but still very good looking. Not here. offensive. No. Tail lights, corporate design-ish, still looks pretty cool. Great. How about the exhaust tips? Let's take a listen to the outside. And they actually do look pretty cool, just simple duels in the middle. Bummer you can't like fully rev it up. Not, not the best sounding car. It's not the best sound. But it, it sounds good from inside. Lots of downshifts there. Just that turbo blow off is nice. This doesn't sound close to as good as the Ferrari 296 with also a V6. Or the Lambo. Well, that's a V6. <laughs> that Lambo was amazing. Yeah. Okay, and then from the side view, really nice smooth body lines. I just, there's nothing I can really complain about. I love the handle to open it up, lift it, everything just looks cool. Yeah, this is actually, I would describe this car as sexy. This is definitely a sexy car. And these wheels look amazing. They look Maserati-esque with the Trident inspiration in them. And the Continental recommended tire would be the Extreme Contact Sport 02. And then from the back, yeah, it's just every angle is cool. The glass that's going over the engine compartment, it looks cool, but like I can't see anything out the back, so we do have a screen here on the rearview mirror. Yeah, and you really do need to use that a lot, but it is still cool seeing your engine back there. Because, yeah. yes, by the way, this is a mid-engine car. Seeing engine, fun. Yes, and the carbon fiber parts of the engine as well. And then before I finish dabbling with the infotainment, if you're looking to buy a Maserati MC20, probably you're not going to find too many of them on tsb.truecar.com, but if you want to find an old Gran Turismo, hit up tsb.truecar.com. Or just buy this one at Maserati of London right now. <laughs> so now onto this infotainment and steering wheel, like this is pure alpha buttons. Like the start stop button is just alpha, but painted blue, yep. which I'm cool with. Steering wheel, like you said, it feels fantastic. No head up display, I don't want one anyways. Don't need it. And this infotainment is the new style infotainment, but it's one screen instead of two screens. So to get to your climate, all you do is you click the climate button and then you pretty much get all the features that would have been on your second climate screen, which we don't even need here. It makes room for the wireless charging tray. And if you plug in, you have plug-in or wireless Apple CarPlay Android Auto. Yeah, and it's full screen, which is great. And then we've got matte carbon throughout the interior, which does look really good. It is not textured, it is nice and smooth, and I really like that. Yeah, very alpha of them, <laughs> right? I feel like that's yeah. more of a um, Stelvio quad style material. Yeah, okay. And then you can also option more carbon fiber on the exterior and potentially more in here as well. And we've got carbon buckets, but they're not like uncomfortable carbon buckets. No, there's like couch carbon lumber. buckets. <laughs> lumber we've got lumbar we've got just so many adjustments to these seats and i think they're, they're made by Saybelt, which makes like actual racing stuff and then we do have the sonus favor system in here and it's great yes. again we got our sirius xm which works fantastic we don't have our drag timer performance pages like we do in oh, the newer no. ones but that's fine we don't need that and then what i do not like is that we only have a reverse camera and no 360 camera but again this is like mc20 2020 where the new Maserati stuff is like 2023, 2024. It makes sense. It's like how the NSX was like their standout car for Acura, but yeah. it had different older tech. Yeah, and then the materials in here are all really nice. They use uh, Alcantara. They tried to use as many Italian companies and products, so it makes sense why all that stuff's in here, including this Italian flag. Yeah. Which is pretty sick. Man, everything about this. Yeah. So with all that excitement out of the way, you like this car? I like this car. I really like this and we car. We both really like this car. I think it's time to get to the price and see if we can actually afford it. This one starts at $275,900. It's a supercar, Canadian, that's okay. This one's optioned out to $326,570. Okay, more than an NSX. How much did that Ferrari cost? Uh, it was like $444 US dollars, which is way more than this. What would you be more excited to see on the road? That Ferrari or this MC20? I've seen one of these MC20s on the road and I was super excited. And honestly, all the new Ferraris kind of blend together for me. And I'm not as excited about seeing them on the road anymore. Can you even get one right away or would you have to wait in line and get a Roma first? I mean, yeah, probably. But this thing you can buy right now. <laughs> and this thing is like wild. The only thing is, because I know the comments are going to bring this up, not sure about the resale value of one of these later. However, I'm gonna make a bold prediction. This will have the best resale value of any modern Maserati. Yeah, I 100% agree. Uh, Cause like, this is this doesn't feel like a Gran Turismo. No. Even though they share a motor and some similarities, but like- The motor is clearly designed for this car first. Yeah, like this is, this is bonkers and I love it. Would I take it over uh, NSX, which I love, love, love. For the price as well. Even not price, like I think with the updoors and like how it's rare, but even an NSX super rare, like 
and, but that's all wheel drive. Yes. I think if I, if I want it to be more, yeah, I got this. I'm going to tackle it rear wheel drive only this, but if I'm like, I need a little bit more of a safety blanket, I'd go NSX. And that one's also, uh, it launches way harder because it's all wheel drive. Yeah. Right? But sounds worse. I think it sounds worse. I actually think this sounds better just because of the little turbo blow off stuff. Like, yeah, that's where I'm sitting with all this stuff. I put this uh, kind of below a 296 just because the 296 was crazy and fast, but this has updoors. So it's like, I really like this a lot. Would you take one 296 or two of these? Two of these. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, patreon.com slash the straight pipes. See you in the next video. See you guys next time. And thank you, Maserati of London for this car.